Welcome and thank you for joining us for this introductory video on the MedTech Europe Code of Ethical Business Practice. The structure of this presentation is as follows. First, there will be an explanation of the reasons why MedTech Europe adopted its code. Second, an introduction to the implementation timeline. Thirdly, a summary of the main requirements of the code. And finally, the outline of the different resources available assisting in the implementation of the code. It is important to remember that this presentation does not substitute the reading of the code itself and aims at outlining its main objectives. The MedTech Europe code. How and why did we get here? In 2016, EDMA and UCOMED merged into MedTech Europe. Previously, each association had its own code of ethics and both had been approved long time ago. Society has evolved a lot in the last decade and industry standards must reflect these changes. Having a single code offers clarity and simplicity to the medical technology industry in their relations with healthcare professionals and organizations. The medtech industry and healthcare professionals, HCPs, collaborate closely throughout several stages of the development and use of medical technologies. HCPs actively participate in the research to develop new technologies. This close collaboration is key to develop innovative technologies for the treatment of patients. HCPs are trained on how to use the technologies. The industry liaises regularly with HCPs to ensure that the technologies are updated and maintained. Industry's behavior must respect high ethical standards and values. This is to reduce compliance risk, safeguard integrity and industry reputation and uphold value and promote an image of a responsible industry, to promote harmonization of ethical standards worldwide, to show that the medical technology industry is serious about self-regulation and goes beyond the requirements of the law, and to respond to the public and judicial scrutiny over the relation between industry and healthcare professionals and go beyond mere transparency of potentially improper practices. MedTech's support to medical education is essential to healthcare professionals and ultimately to patients. However, the manner in which it is conducted needs to change. This is one of the reasons why MedTech Europe adopted the Code of Ethical Business Practice. This map shows the current status of the discussions around direct sponsorship worldwide. The Implementation Timeline Traditionally, there have been two types of industry support to third-party organized events. Direct sponsorship, which is where companies select individual healthcare professionals and financially support their participation to third-party organized events. Such financial support typically covers some or all of the travel, lodging and registration costs of the healthcare professional. On the other hand, we have educational grants. Companies provide educational grants to hospitals, medical societies and other third parties to support genuine medical education. These include educational grants provided to support healthcare professional participation to third party organized events. Healthcare professionals are selected by the receiver of the grant. The timeline to change from one model to the other is the following. The code entered into force in January 2017. Educational grants need to comply with it and its reinforced rules. In January 2018, direct sponsorship is no longer allowed. Educational grants become the only way to support medical education. The different obligations for member companies enter into force as follows. The code entered into force in January 2017, including all chapters and new rules except for the prohibition of direct sponsorship. Companies need to collect the data on educational grants provided in 2017 to be reported in 2018. In January 2018, direct sponsorship will no longer be allowed and companies will start disclosing the collected information on educational grants. Companies will have until the end of June 2018 to finish disclosing the 2017 data on educational grants. Finally, national associations will have until January 2020 to transpose the code locally. We must now look at the different obligations of the parties concerned. National associations must transpose the MedTech Europe code by 2020. They must recommend and promote the MedTech Europe code as best practice. They must engage local stakeholders to change local practice. 
and must submit strategies and progress reports, including the public transparency on the MedTech Europe website. Member companies must transpose the code by the 1st of January 2017 and phase out direct sponsorship by 2018. They must support national associations they are members of to support local transposition of the MedTech Europe code. Finally, MedTech Europe must provide training on the MedTech Europe code and the normative framework. It must support to national associations on the transposition of the MedTech Europe code. It must also coordinate and support communication to external stakeholders. The content of the code. It is important to note that the code applies whenever a company member of MedTech Europe interact with healthcare professionals or healthcare organizations based in the MedTech Europe geographic area, or when they organize an activity within the MedTech Europe geographic area. Healthcare professionals, or HCPs, are individuals that in the course of their professional activities may directly or indirectly purchase, lease, recommend, administer, use, supply, prescribe, procure or determine the purchase of or lease of medical technologies or related services. This includes, but is not limited to, physicians, nurses, technicians, laboratory scientists, researchers, research coordinators or procurement professionals. Healthcare organizations, or HCOs, are legal entities or bodies that are a healthcare, medical or scientific association or organization which may have a direct or indirect influence on the prescription, recommendation, purchase, order, supply, utilization, sale or lease of medical technologies or related services or through which one of one or more healthcare professionals provide services. These can be hospitals or group purchasing organizations, clinics, laboratories, pharmacies, research institutions, foundations, universities, or other teaching institutions or learned or professional societies. This is except patient organizations. Another group of stakeholders that is important are professional conference organizers, or PCOs. They are for-profit organizations which typically act on behalf of a HCO or as a standalone organization. They specialize in the management of congresses, conferences, seminars, and similar events. The MedTech Europe geographic area includes the 28 countries in the European Economic Area, as well as countries where member associations are located, namely Turkey, Russia, and countries covered by the Middle East Association of Medical Devices. You can see the structure of the code in this slide. The code is based on five guiding principles which are applicable to any interaction between industry and healthcare professionals and healthcare organizations. These five principles are, one, the principle of perception. This principle highlights the need to constantly take into account how the general public perceives how industry operates and behaves. Two, the principle of transparency. This concerns the obligations of informing the healthcare professionals institution of any interaction between industry and individual healthcare professionals. Three, the principle of equivalence. This means any fee needs to follow a strict fair market value methodology. Four, the principle of separation which ensures that business decisions are not primarily sales driven. Finally, the principle of documentation, which requires traceability of contracts, agreements, and other related documents. The biggest changes brought by the code are the phasing out of direct sponsorship, the introduction of transparency for educational grants, the new common chapter on general criteria for events, the new chapter on demonstration products and samples, agreed definitions, and the common independent enforcement mechanism. At this point, we'll go through the different chapters of the code. Chapter 1 covers the general criteria for all types of events. Under the MedTech Europe code, both company events and third-party organized events need to comply with the same general criteria. These general criteria are the following. The event program, event location and venue, guests, reasonable hospitality, travel, and transparency. There are some basic parameters that all events need to comply with 
respect to the program. The detailed program should be made available in the format of a timetable with no gaps during the sessions. We expect a full day to be of minimum six hours of sessions and a half day of three hours. No half days can be featured in the middle of the event week, only as first and last days. Looking at the event program, it is important to note the following. The program must be directly related to the specialty and or medical practice of the healthcare professionals who will attend the event. It must be sufficiently relevant to justify the attendance of the HCP. It must also be under the sole control and responsibility of the organizer. Finally, it is not appropriate to organize events which include entertainment. On this last point, what is meant by the no entertainment criteria? Under the code, entertainment includes, but is not limited to, the following aspects. Dancing or arrangements where live music is the main attraction, sightseeing trips, theater excursions, and sporting events. Incidental or background music, along with reasonable hospitality, are not considered entertainment. There are certain criteria which are essential when selecting an appropriate event location and venue. Perception is key. The location and venue must not be perceived as luxury, tourist, holiday or entertainment oriented. The location must be centrally located with regards to the place of residence of the majority of invited participants. The location must be easily accessible. This means in close proximity to an airport, train station or other transportation infrastructure. The location must also be a recognized scientific or business center. Finally, the selected time of year is also essential. It must be outside a tourist season for the selected geographic location. Another element which must be taken into consideration when organizing an event are guests. According to the code, guests are spouses, partners, family, or other people accompanying a healthcare professional. Member companies are not permitted to facilitate or pay for meals, travel, accommodation, or other expenses for guests of healthcare professionals. Furthermore, guests should not participate in the event program unless they would have a genuine professional interest in the event itself. What is required when it comes to hospitality? Hospitality is accommodation and meals. It must be subordinate to the event in time, meaning that accommodation should be limited to the duration of the event. It must also focus on the event purpose. It must be reasonable. It must also follow the appropriate standard for the given location. And it must comply with the national laws, regulations, and professional codes of conduct. Any reimbursed or paid travel should be reasonable. This means that it should normally be economy or standard class. Business class can be considered for flights longer than five hours. The travel must also be actual, meaning it cannot cover a period of stay beyond the official duration of the event. What is covered under the transparency requirement? In many European countries, there are disclosure or approval requirements. And when this is the case, companies must comply with them. When there is no such obligation, companies are nonetheless obliged to ensure that the relevant supervisor or employer of a healthcare professional is informed of the interaction. The code covers two types of third-party organized events, third-party organized educational conferences and third-party organized procedure training meetings. We define them as follows. Third-party organized educational conferences are genuine, independent, educational, scientific or policy-making conferences organized to promote scientific knowledge, medical advancement and or the delivery of effective healthcare. They need to be consistent with relevant guidelines established by professional societies or organizations for such educational meetings. Examples of these are conferences organized by national, regional or specialty medical associations or societies, hospitals, professional conference organizers, patient organizations or accredited continuing medical education providers. On the other hand, we have third-party organized procedure trainings. These are primarily intended to provide healthcare professionals with information and training on the safe and effective performance of one or more clinical procedures in circumstances which concern specific therapeutic, diagnostic or rehabilitative procedures, namely clinical courses of action, methods or techniques, 
rather than the use of medical technologies. And practical demonstrations and or training for healthcare professionals, where the majority of the training program is delivered in a clinical environment. The requirements for both types of third-party organized educational events are almost the same, as can be appreciated in this slide. The only difference is that due to the very particular setup of third-party organized procedure training meetings, companies may still directly support attendance to these events. The conference vetting system reviews the compliance of third-party educational events with the MedTech Europe Code of Ethical Business Practice to determine the appropriateness for member companies financially supporting the event via individual sponsorship of European healthcare professionals to participate in such events, educational grants to the event organizers and, starting in 2018, for commercial activities during the event. CVS was established to simplify and centralize the decision-making process based on general criteria for events. It also has the advantage of providing a single assessment for all companies, eliminating duplicities and inconsistencies. CVS looks at events where there are participants from more than one country within the MedTech Europe geographic area. Events can be submitted by both members and the conference organizers. The conference vetting system looks at the following criteria. The scientific program, geographic location and venue, accommodation, hospitality, guest packages, and communication support. Chapter 3 looks at company-organized events. The code covers two general types of company-organized events. Company-organized products and procedural training and education events, and sales, promotional, and other business meetings. Product and procedural training and education events are primarily intended to provide healthcare professionals with genuine education including information and or training on safe and effective use of medical technologies, therapies and or related services, and or safe and effective performance of clinical procedures, and or related disease areas. In all cases, the information and or training directly concern a member company's medical technologies, therapies and or related services. Sales, promotional and other business meetings have the objective to affect the sale and or promotion of a member company's medical technologies and or related services, including meetings to discuss product features, benefits and use and or commercial terms of supply. In this table, you can appreciate the differences between both types of events. The main difference is that companies can directly support the attendance of healthcare professionals to product and procedure trainings and education events, whereas they can't do so for any kind of promotional meeting unless it is for the demonstration of non-portable equipment. Chapter 4 looks at the different types of grants and also at charitable donations. The code requires certain conditions for educational grants to be provided. These are the following. Grants will be publicly disclosed by companies in a central European platform ensuring increased transparency of the funds allocated to medical education. Conferences benefiting from an educational grant still need to comply with specific requirements that we have seen in the previous sections. For instance, the general criteria for events and the conference vetting system. Grants can be only be provided to legal entities but never to individuals and will require written contract and other related documentation. Companies can define the type of recipients which should be eligible to benefit from the grant, but cannot select individual recipients. Finally, companies must have an internal and independent process based on objective criteria to assess grant requests. As can be seen in this slide, neither educational grants nor charitable donations or research grants can be directly provided to healthcare professionals. On the other hand, charitable donations can only be provided to healthcare organizations under demonstrated financial hardship, but their main recipients are charitable organizations. Another difference is that both research and educational grants can only be provided on a restricted basis, meaning that companies need to indicate what can the grant be used for. On the other hand, charitable donations can only be restricted to the extent necessary 
to ensure that they are used for philanthropic or charitable purposes. Finally, only educational grants will be publicly disclosed. Educational grants will be published in a centralized European platform, Transparent MedTech. For this purpose, educational grants will be divided in two general categories. Educational grants to support events and all other educational grants. The first reporting period will be 2017 and this data will be published in 2018. Chapter 5 looks at arrangements with consultants. Member companies may engage healthcare professionals to provide bona fide consulting and other services. For example, research participation on advisory boards, presentations at company events, and product development. Member companies may pay healthcare professionals reasonable remuneration for performing these services. The code is applicable also to these cases where a consultant healthcare professional declines a fee for provision of their services. Research is covered in Chapter 6. Member company initiated research is where a member company uses a healthcare professional as a consultant, for example, to lead a study on the member company's behalf. The member company shall ensure that consulting arrangements comply fully with Chapter 5, Arrangements with Consultants, as well as ensure that the documentation requirements are fully complied with. Local laws and regulation must also always be observed. Member Company Post-Market Product Evaluation Evaluation products may be provided on a no-charge basis in return for the requested user feedback from healthcare professionals at the healthcare organization. Where the evaluation products are multiple use, the defined period is the time necessary for the evaluation. Chapter 7 looks at royalties. A member company and a healthcare professional may enter into a royalty agreement where the healthcare professional is expected to make or has made a novel, significant or innovative contribution to, for example, the development of a product, technology, process or method such that the HCP would be considered to be the sole or joint owner of such intellectual property under applicable laws and regulations. Regarding gifts and educational items, companies may only provide them if they are compliant with applicable local requirements, provided on an exceptional basis, inexpensive, if they are of a greater value, they can only be provided to a healthcare organization, they must be related to the healthcare professional's practice, benefit patients or serve a genuine educational function, they cannot be provided in response to requests made by healthcare professionals, cash or cash equivalents are not permitted, they must also aim not to improperly reward, incentivize and or encourage healthcare professionals to purchase, lease, recommend, prescribe, use, supply or procure the member company's products or services. Food, alcohol and items which are primarily for the use in a home or a car, as well as gifts to mark significant life, are never appropriate. Member companies may provide demonstration products and or samples at no charge in order to enable healthcare professionals and healthcare organizations to evaluate or familiarize themselves with safe and appropriate use of the product or related service, determine if to use order or purchase the product and or service in the future. Provision of such products must not improperly reward, induce and or encourage healthcare professionals and organizations to purchase, lease, recommend, prescribe, use, supply or procure member companies' products or services. The code will be enforced through an independent body called the MedTech Europe Compliance Panel. This panel will follow the guidelines set in the procedural framework, which lays down the rules for processing complaints, the possible sanctions which are faced for non-compliance, as well as the governance bodies of the code. Implementation tools for members. Available in the MedTech Europe website, there are a wide range of materials available. Some of them are available upon request. Please do not hesitate to contact us for any question or request about the implementation materials. Ethical MedTech is MedTech Europe's compliance portal. It hosts the following MedTech Industries initiatives in ethics and compliance, as well as valuable resources. At present, the following three initiatives can be found. The Conference Vetting System and Transparent MedTech, both of which were discussed previously in this video presentation. 
along with the Ethical Charter. The Ethical Charter is a voluntary certification initiative that ensures commitment of third-party educational event organizers to the application of MedTech Europe code provisions. The Ethical Charter provides a trusted partner logo, valid for a duration of maximum two years, which is then renewable. The logo will also provide a presumption of compliance for the events which are eligible to be assessed under the conference vetting system. Thank you for joining us for this video presentation on the MedTech Europe Code of Ethical Business Practice. Please do not hesitate to visit our website or contact the MedTech Europe Secretariat if you have any further queries.